All right, this video goes over how to calculate the point price elasticity of demand. And it's very similar to calculating the price elasticity of demand, but instead of being given two different points, you're given one point and a demand function, and you're trying to calculate the price elasticity of demand at that one point. So to get the equation, we start out with our same equation as before, this percent change in quantity over percent change in price. This is also equal to a, the change in Q value over Q, which is percent change in Q, over change in P over P, which is the same as percent change in P. We can rearrange this equation to get P over Q, which is our one point, times change in Q over change in P. So the trick here is how do we get this change in Q over change in P? And we do that by taking our demand function, so here's an example, 15,000 minus 50p. So when p changes, say by one, then q is going to change by negative 50. So our change in q over change in p is gonna be negative 50 over one, because p changes by one, q changes by negative 50, so our value here is going to be negative 50. So now we know what our change in Q over change in P value is. We just need to look at our P over Q value. So let's do some examples. The first example is what if we have a price of 100 and a quantity of 10,000? So remember, we do our P over Q so we want 100 over 10,000, and then this quantity is going to be multiplied by our change in Q over change in P value, which is negative 50. So 100 over 10,000 times negative 50 is going to give us negative 0.5, because this right here is going to be the same as 1 over 100 and negative 50 times 1 over 100 is going to give us negative half. So here our point price elasticity of demand given these points is going to be negative half which is inelastic and it's negative which is good because it's demand so it's downward sloping. Alright what if we have a price of 10? If we plug this into our demand function we're going to get a quantity demanded of 14,500. So again, we put price over quantity times that change in Q over change in P. So 10 over 14,500 times our negative 50. So what is that going to give us? If you use a calculator, you end up getting a value of 0.034. And that makes sense because as the price goes down, we end up seeing more inelastic, relatively more inelastic demand. This is getting closer to zero, which is saying that the sensitivity of quantity to price is becoming smaller. And that makes sense if you see your typical demand curve. You're more elastic in this range and more inelastic in this range. And so we drop the price from 100 to 10, and so we would expect to see a more inelastic value. So hopefully that helps out. Remember the trick to calculating these guys is finding out what your change in Q over change in P is. So let's just do one more example to hit that home. What if you have a demand function where Q equals 8,800 minus 1,000 P. So what is our change in Q? Remember, look for this value here. If P changes by one, Q is going to change by negative 1,000. So our change in Q over change in P is going to end up being negative 1,000. And that's the big trick to this being able to find that value. You can take the derivative of the function or you can just look at what the value is times P, and that gives you that change in P 
the change in Q over change in P value.